Hi, welcome to part one. Here we are looking at brand new series on GCP associate cloud engineer. These questions are relevant in 2025. These are brand new questions for 2025. We are recording this in the month of March 2025. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, do so. There are thousand plus videos to help you on certifications around all cloud technologies. AWS, Azure, GCP. We are focused only on these three cloud products because these are leading products. All these three are leading cloud platforms. Become a cloud kernel member for a very small premium. You can gain access to so many paid content which will help you with certifications. This is a question. You need a dynamic way of provisioning VMs. You know, we create VMs. We have one VM2, VM3. So, in order to provision this, there has to be some sort of dynamic way. The exact specifications, where is it stored? It will be in the configuration file. So, we want to follow best practices that Google recommends. So, which method from here we should use? Should we use deployment manager, cloud composer, managed instance group, or unmanaged instance group? Okay, to summarize the requirements, we have summarized it here. We have to do dynamic provisioning. What does this mean? This means there is a need for automation. Automation which will provide you the ability to create, modify, and delete VMs based on defined specification. One. Second, where is the specification kept? It is kept in the configuration file. The specifications of the VMs. Like when we are spawning the VM, what should be the configuration? We have to use this. So that means it is indicating that there is a need for infrastructure as a code principle here. And third is Google's recommended practices. That means we need to choose a solution that aligns with the best practices for managing infrastructure on GCP. In our case here, deployment manager looks correct. Why? Because deployment manager, it is making use of infrastructure as a uh, code this service it uses and uh, you can uh, define the cloud resources in yaml files those are called config files and then you can use this for complex deployments for example dynamic provisioning is a complex requirement and it very well aligns with google's uh, practices so deployment manager would be our answer but let us look at other options cloud composer this primarily is a orchestration service you have you must know airflow we schedule like for example we say task one so once task one is done then you execute task two once task two is done then you execute task three this orchestration you can do it using Cloud Composer. Okay, so Cloud Composer is not used for dynamic provisioning of VMs. Then instance group, as usual, uh, we have to manage identical VMs, then we use it. So we don't directly use, they are not making use of configuration files. So that is why this will not suffice. Same with unmanaged instance group, yeah, they don't provide automation. This is not an automation stuff and it is not suitable for dynamic provisioning because it is not even adhering to recommended practices. So deployment manager would be our final answer in this case. Okay, this next one. Uh, you are having a docker file this is the next question you are having a docker file and you are planning to deploy on kubernetes engine so what should you do in this case so you have to do a docker file deployment so you deploy application by a docker file into kubernetes clusters running on gke and gke kubernetes engine this indicates we will use Kubernetes commands and configurations. Simple. So if you see option A, it is telling guys, let's use this command kub ectl. So 
this one if you want to interact with kubernetes clusters then you use it it is not a standard command there is no direct command to deploy docker file so that is why this will not fit okay can we use g cloud app deploy command so this is a command line tool for interacting with google cloud platform services so this guy will deploy app engine i mean if you want to apply uh, deploy to app engine this is your app engine app engine then you use it it will not deploy to kubernetes engine it will deploy to app engine only this app engine only you can deploy not to kubernetes engine okay c says guys let's create docker image from docker file which is fine let us upload it to container registry yes that is the process create a yaml to point to that image and create a deployment with that file this would work fine you build a docker image here you push it to the container registry you create yaml and you apply the uh, deployment so this option is correct this will work d it is telling that guys create a docker image from a docker file upload to cloud storage See, uploading is not required you have to register that is one they are creating a yaml file but then they are making use of kube ectl for deployment so see few things are a problem here cloud storage can it store docker image yes it can but it is not the recommended way to deploy images to gk that is not recommended you have to register it okay so container registry registry is designed for storing the images first thing so that see whatever it is meant for if you have a big home rich people are meant to stay there so poor people cannot stay there it's for rich people only uh the option is technically possible but not the best practice it is less efficient so we have a better option c is a better option that is why we are not using d as an option for us so in this case uh this will not work so answer is correct method is this one we have to use option c in one more question i'll just I'll not explain this go through this yourself and i'm giving you what is understanding is so what you have to do out of the question and this is the answer final answer so if you are able to solve it yourself that's great otherwise in the next part we will start with solving this question first so if you are not yet subscribed do so Thousand plus videos are already there to help you with AWS, Azure, Cloud, and GCP Cloud certifications. This brings us to the end of brand new series, March 2025 onwards, on Associate Cloud Engineer. This is a Google Cloud certification. This was part one. We will post many more such parts.